Hello, my name is Michael Lambert, and uh, today I want to talk about money. I want to talk about your money and my money and what the government is doing with it and what they have been doing doing with it over the last uh, uh, last few years. But um, I, I have to say that I, I, this last week, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, you're probably the same. I'm just, just, just so worried. I'm just so, I, I'm just in a nervous wreck because I, I, I'm terrified that the, the, the mob are going to come, come down my road. And I mean, we're, we're going to put bars on the windows and so on because clearly there's a rampaging mob that are, you know, are just terrifying, that, that are just ruining this, this, this wonderful country. And uh, I mean, the, 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 the wonderful and fragrant uh, Suella Braverman, she, uh, the former um, secretary, she said the other day, and she, she alerted a lot of us to it, to, to, um, that, that, that um, she said, in fact, what she said was, the truth is that the Islamists, the extremists and the anti-Semites are in charge now. Uh, they've bullied the Labour Party. They've bullied our institutions. And now they've bullied our country into submission. And it's true. I mean, we've had to submit to them all. I mean, it is Islamists who are deciding everything, making our laws do everything now. We, 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 we've just been bullied. And uh, the charming and uh, extremely clever intellectual um, thinker, Lee Anderson, I mean, he said, uh, um, I believe they've got control of Khan uh, and they've got control of London. He's actually given our capital city away to his mates. So I, I, I mean, I don't know quite how it works, but I didn't realise, I mean, I, none of this is all new to me. I had no idea that London was actually now being controlled by Islamists. But I don't know, does Khan get his instructions from, from Kabul or from, from Islamabad or something every day? I mean, you know, who actually tells him what to do I mean, of these Islamists? But uh, the Prime Minister has really uh, 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 um, got involved as well. And... Um, He's pointed out, and he's, he's alerted us all to it, really, that, that, that as he says, that protests are, are uh, they're descending into mob rule. You know, that's when, when uh, lots of people gather every uh, week or two and, uh, and hold signs up and walk around Westminster peacefully demonstrating. They're, 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 that's mob rule. That's my rule. And he says, he says, a growing consensus, that's, uh, 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 I suppose, that's most of us really would agree with him, that mob rule is replacing democratic rule. So Parliament is really being taken over by, by, by the, um, the Islamists who are, who are running the country, as Braverman says, running the country from outside. And we've got, to be, we've got to fight these people. We've got to stand up against these people. They are here to destroy us, to ruin us. So really, really be alert. If you see a lady in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a hijab, uh, 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 just be very careful. Uh, they, they are dangerous. And he says, uh, uh, Sunak, you know, he's going to do what he can for us. He says, I, I'm going to do whatever it requires, it requires to, to protect our democracy and the values that we all hold dear, values that these, these Islamists don't understand, they, they, these, 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 this mob. And that's it in a nutshell, isn't it? That's it. You get failed politicians hopelessly failed. Look at Braverman, look at uh, Patel, look at uh, 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 Sunak, look at the entire government. Utter failures. Everything is going wrong. They know they have no way of recovering. And so what do they do? They pick on a minority. Just like happened in, in, in Germany in the 30s. You pick on a minority and you keep blaming this minority for what's going wrong. It's absolutely disgusting. It's disgraceful. It's immoral. It's absolutely wrong. To try and whip up, that's what they're doing, they are whipping up hatred of Muslims without any justification whatsoever. No atrocities have been committed, nothing, one or two people have, have been arrested for carrying signs which are considered to be anti-Israeli. It's, it's really something we should be really worried about. And when you look at the state we're in, I know I mention this every week, the mess we're in, and much of it, much of it is a result of Brexit. Um, you know, we'll, you know, whenever the subject of how badly we're doing comes up, they'll all say, oh, we're doing better than, better than, 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 than anybody else in the G20 and we're growing faster and all the rest of it. Everybody's poor, nobody's got any money. We've got a lot of very, very rich people in this country, very rich, and we've got an awful lot of very poor people. In fact, the bottom 20% are poorer than any other country in Europe, I'm told. And the response of the government is blame everybody else. 
we're paying the highest taxes ever. 44% of GDP goes to the government. And we've got the worst public services we've probably ever had. We've got the, the, the biggest, according to the ONS, we've got the biggest fall in living standards since records began. And, and we've got people growing up now, they don't know whether they're going to get a job or not, and if they do get a job, they've got no chance ever of buying a house, and, and then we've got rents going through the roof. I mean, the whole country is going to the dogs. But of course, it's all the fault of the Islamists. And I think when the country is in such a mess and doing so badly, uh, nobody has any confidence in order to invest. Now, we're famous, famous for our very low productivity. And the only way you improve productivity is by investment. You invest in, in, in training and you invest in machinery and so on. Nobody's going to invest in a country which is going downhill, which is going to the dogs. Nobody's got any confidence. People aren't going to come here from abroad and invest. And you look at... Uh, you know, look at the state of the public service, look at the NHS, look at the schools falling down, look at uh, 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 border controls. There's a report out today about how the border, border controls are, since we've taken back control, are, are, are absolutely hopeless mess. And look at defence. You know, last couple of weeks ago, they were going to send off one of those aircraft carriers to the Red Sea, and then it went off and broke down, and then they found they couldn't send the second one because it wasn't, it wasn't ready and so on. Now, apparently, it's been that's we're going to try and sell one of them. Just really, really, really how bad can it get? And despite everything being 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 short of money, every every department in government is short of money. And what do they want to do? What are they going to do in the budget? They're going to cut taxes. Absolutely insane. There was a poll, I think, a few days ago said that 75% of people would prefer not to cut taxes, but prefer to have better, better investment, greater investment in public services. But no, no, they want to cut taxes. And of course, we've got some of the richest people in Europe living in London, living in immense, immense wealth and, and luxury. Uh, and the whole rest of the population is, is getting desperate. But, you know, one of the reasons, and this is what I wanted to talk about today, one of the reasons why we're doing so badly is that over the last uh, well, the period of this government, we've wasted so much money. Staggering amounts of money have been wasted. Now, there's a website called Best for Britain, and I'll, I'll leave a link down below, and I recommend you have a look at it. And what this, uh, this website has done is they've taken, uh, um, they've taken reports of, of wasting money and so on uh, from various uh, newspapers, and they've listed them all with links to the newspaper. Uh, and uh, they, they've um, separated them to three categories. One is what they call outrageous outgoings. Uh, another is called duff deals, and the third is crony contracts. And I, I'd like to spend a few minutes just actually reading some of these to you because it, it is staggering. And when you think this is our money, it's your money, it's my money, that they're throwing away and then they're telling us they haven't got any money for, for the NHS, they haven't got any money for public services, they've got to, they, <clears throat> they've got to uh, squeeze us more and more and more. Uh, and this is what they do with our money. For example, this is under outrageous outgoings. This is where politicians spend money unnecessarily. Painting the Prime Minister's planes, 1.7 million. Scrapping blue uh, passports, 11 million. A contract to, contracts to big consulting firms without tender, this is where uh, government ministers give their mates contracts, 56 million pounds. The uh, festival of Brexit, do you remember that? I, 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 I didn't even know it had happened. It's eventually called Unboxed. This cost £120 million. Liz Truss spent £500,000 on a flight to Australia. Uh, excess travel costs incurred by Truss as Foreign Secretary, because sure we want to go in private planes, £1.8 million. Polling and focus groups for Rishi Sunak's image, £1.3 million. Government use of temporary agency staff, £3 billion. There's so much of this... <clears throat> consultancy fees more than double the previous year that's 21 911 million pounds golden goodbye for trust cabinet 709,000 pounds taxpayer money used to fund Johnson's Partygate defence remember that 200,000 pounds 220,000 pounds Staffing costs to review laws on chopping uh, retained EU law, seven and a half million. 
fine. Apparently we were fined, presumably by the EU, for uh, lax uh, customs checks. 2.3 billion. New helicopter for the Prime Minister. You know he likes probably going around in a helicopter. 50 million pounds that cost. Sunak's Covid spreading eat out to help out scheme. 350 million. Government uh, builds Brexit import inspection sites that were never used. 466 million. Sunak takes a helicopter flight for a trip that would have taken an hour by train. £6,000. Excessive dining and alcohol expensive by foreign office. £334,000. And a lot of others. I mean, you can't believe some of these things. It's quite extraordinary. Um, this is this is mostly foreign off office staff, I think. Uh, rooms at the Five Star Hotel and the Hotel Daniele in Venice, three thousand two hundred. Um, government lawyers for the COVID inquiry, fifty five million. Ice cream in Uruguay, eight hundred and thirty seven pounds. Luxury party villa in Naples, eight thousand eight hundred. Amusement Park in Sydney, 6,000. Luxury hotels and food for civil servants, 14 million. Ill-timed get ready for Brexit campaign, 46 million. Then it goes on to duff deals. This is where they've wasted money, thrown money away. MOD council projects and wastage since the uh, financial year 2019-20, million. Public Accounts Committee found that uh, the test and trace cost 29.5 billion. And uh, they said there was no clear evidence that test and trace had any impact on reducing COVID infections. 29.5 billion. Do you know, if you were to count out that amount of money pound by pound every second, pound, 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 you would count day and night for 935 years, pound a second, to get to 29.5 billion. It was just given to Dido Harding, here, I would go. Fraud in the uh, two years following the uh, beginning of the pandemic, and that's particularly uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, bounce back loans. I'll tell you a little bit more about them in a moment. 14.4 billion. Unused or unsuitable PPE, 14.9 billion. Rishi Sunak failed to insure the national debt against interest rate rises, cost us 11 billion. I mean, I, I don't know if you're staying with this, but it just, you know, every, every one I read, I just c can't believe these amounts of money. Our money, your money, my money, taxpayers' money. This is why we're being squeezed, because they're throwing away so much money. It is utter incompetence. Incompetence, it's stupidity, and, and as you'll see in a moment, it's a lot of uh, a lot of corruption too. Money paid to the Rwandan government for the uh, 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 that ridiculous scheme, which is falling apart, which apparently is going to end up costing what is it, three million pounds per per person sent or something, one hundred and forty million on that so far, but it's it's going to be a lot more. Money spent on a boat that will not be built. That was uh, Johnson wanted to have his uh, presidential yacht, two point five million. Uh, land for council at leg of HS2 sold at a loss of 100 million. Money to pay for temporary classrooms due to concrete scandal, 18.5 million. Paying Matt Hancock's neighbour to produce. Uh, these are now the, these are the cronies. These 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 are the crooked deals, or not crooked? The deals done with a uh, Conservative Party supporters and donors. Just listen to this lot. It really is just unbelievable. Face shields from a Conservative councillor's company, 120 million. Paying Matt Hancock's neighbour to produce PPE, 30 million. Uh, genetic sequencing by David Cameron's uh, former employer, 123 million. Uh, testing contract to own Patterson's employer, 479 million. PPE supplies from senior government advisor, 252 million. Fashion company linked to owner of Aanda Capital awarded PPE contract of 25.8 million. Fashion firm owned by a conservative donor awarded PPE contract 160 million. Uh, firm advised by Lord Feldman uh, 22.6 uh, million. 
There are loads and loads and loads of them, but none of them is being investigated. And they're all going to get away with this. Grants to a flying taxi company owned by a Conservative donor, 12.4 million. A family that had donated to the Conservatives sees their firm awarded contracts of 7.2 billion million. Uh, a company chaired by a government advisor awarded PCR testing contract, 20.6 million. You know, these are big, big amounts. These are big contracts. And when you consider that they're probably making 50% profit on these, and it's our money, it's your money, it's my money. Firm belonging to a conservative donor awarded contract for remote schooling laptops, 240 million. Firm owned by Matt Hancock's friend awarded a PPE contract, 14.4 million. Firm linked to Lord Ashcroft, given COVID testing contract, 350 million. Pestfix, that's a pet company, uh, 313.7 million. Firm linked to Matt Hancock's family awarded COVID testing deal, 5.5 million. Firm owned by ex-Conservative councillor and Conservative donor awarded contracts for supply of masks and gas, 275 million. It goes on and on and on. I won't read them all to you. A company whose director donated to Conservatives uh, uh, awarded respirator contracts 10 days later. So he gave them some money. 10 days later, he gets a contract with 93 million. And... Uh, just one or two more I'll mention. Sanitise a contract to a firm that was dormant. 43.8 million. Remember, most of these companies had no experience of PPE. Covid contracts given to outsourcing firm whose board includes a Conservative politician, 110 million. Firm with ties to a pro-Brexit lobbying group, which included Rishi Sunak and Michael Gove, awarded conf uh, Covid contracts for 777 million. Tory minister's husband's firm awarded MOD contract worth tens of millions, 35.2 million in fact. And Michelle Moen was paid 29 million by the company she referred to the government VIP lane, uh, and that was uh, 202.8 million. If you have a look at this, uh, as I say, I'll leave the, list, the, the, the link down below. If you have a look at this, uh, um, uh, this website, every single instance is uh is provided with a link so you can go read the article so it's all it's 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 it, it's all um as was reported but let me just say finish off by saying something about these um uh, bounce back loans because this is something i think if you look at at, at sunak's um uh, sunak's performance i mean he he gave away a lot of money during uh, uh, during covid and provide a lot of support to a lot of firms, and, and a lot of it was very important and, and, uh, uh, and essential. Um, but he also, he failed, to, as I mentioned there, failed to insurance against, uh, insure against interest rates going up, which cost us 11, 11 billion. He, uh, he came up with uh, Eat Out to Help Out, which was an absolute disaster and also very expensive. But also he came out with the bounce back loans. And uh, I, I've talked about these before, but it's really quite interesting. These bounce back loans were, were really very simple. Uh, if you had a business and because of COVID you were unable to trade or things were difficult, you could go onto the government website and you had to put in the name of your company and uh, you had to put in whatever your last year's turnover was and you then had to say uh, how much you wanted to borrow. And you could borrow up to 20% of your previous year's turnover, maximum £50,000. Now, all you had to do then was fill in the name of your bank and the money was transferred. There were no questions, no checks whatsoever. And of course, people cottoned on to this. I mean, every crook in the land uh, cottoned on to it. And, and there were thousands and thousands of people who got these loans without any intention of paying them back. There was a famous story about two guys were caught at Heathrow Airport with £50,000 in their, in their luggage. And when asked where it had come from, they said, well, it was a bounce back loan. Uh, and why were they taken out of the country? Oh, they were going to go buy a house in Spain. Uh, I mean, just people just saw this as an opportunity to, to, to get money off the government, which they never have to pay back. Now, there's a guy, uh, a guy called Chase Mandis. He owns a, a, a chain of shops called Kingdom of Sweets. He's got shops in Oxford Street and you have one in Piccadilly and all over. I don't think, I think he's got about a dozen now. He's being chased for four and a half billion pounds worth of rates, which he hasn't paid. He's a director of dozens of companies. Now, he had uh, 12 companies, or 12 of his companies, at the time that the bounce back loans were going, uh, 12 of his companies suddenly had on their balance sheets loans of £50,000. Now, it may be, of course, it's nothing to do with bounce back loans. Maybe 
something completely different. Maybe the money came from somewhere else, but it seems very unlikely it didn't, that it did. And it seems these businesses are all being, uh, a lot of them not trading, a lot of them hadn't traded before. And uh, it's extremely unlikely any of that money, that uh, 550 or 600,000 pounds worth of loans will ever be paid back. And yet the guy is still running these big shops in, 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 in Oxford Street. And, and it was that easy. Uh, and yet, uh, apparently, uh, Sunak doesn't want to pursue this. I think he thinks it's, uh, it's not worth wasting time on trying to get this money back. And I think that is just an example of how incompetent he is, despite the fact he's so well uh, regarded as a, as a former chancellor, uh, 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 and just how, how badly things are being handled. And as I say, as I keep saying, it's your money, it's my money. We're all, all having our money just thrown away in all these different uh, um, these just irresponsible, sloppy, inefficient, incompetent, and very often corrupt uh, payments and awards. And it's, uh, it, 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 it's not right. It really is not right. But anyhow, uh, that's what I think about. I'm sorry it was a long list, but uh, I think it's. I, th I don't think it should be forgotten. And I think I, I just hope that when the uh, when we get the Labour government, that they'll uh, they'll pursue some of these people because uh, there's a lot of money out there which is owing to the government. There's a lot of money out there that uh, that was frankly taken for for um, particularly, for example, PPE for, um, uh, and false pretenses where people provided uh, uh, people who were inexperienced and had no idea what they're doing, provided a lot of uh, uh, very inferior merchandise for, or very often unusual merchandise for, for uh, vast sums of money. Anyhow, that's what I think about it. And uh, if you've watched this far, thank you very much indeed. If you haven't subscribed, I really would appreciate it if you do so. And uh, so until, until next time, thank you for watching and bye for now.